Okay, welcome back everyone. Now the last couple of weeks have been a roller coaster ride when it comes to the likes of AMC. They are the most traded stock. As of recent, AMC is the most traded stock. And this is all part of a momentum trade, where usually it involves a form of a short squeeze or a type of gamma squeeze, where the likes of the hedge funds and anyone else who is short in the stock has to buy back at a higher price. Now these momentum trades happen because individuals on the likes of Reddit target certain companies that have been heavily shorted. And so today I'm going to be going over some other companies that are heavily shorted. Perhaps they have the potential to be the next AMC. Just be aware that as much as these prices rise, they can decrease in a similar fashion. And so for those of you who are looking for a profit, it generally makes sense to swing trade these types of companies. Now I'm going to set the number of likes that we're aiming to achieve on this video this week. So the like count is set to 37, so it seems achievable. 37 thumbs up on the video. Hit that button now and let's get straight into the video. So the first company I want to look into is Workhorse. It's ticker symbol WKHS. And the last year they've performed pretty well. This time last year they had a price around $3 to $5. Their peak was back in February of 2021. Now the reason why the sell-off took place is because Workhorse didn't actually get the USPS contract. Now at the time, at the $42 mark, there was the expectation, or at least hope, that Workhorse would receive the contract. So on the one hand, okay, Workhorse doesn't have this contract. But with the recent sell-off, if you look at the past, they actually made revenue 1.39 million. Money was made by this company. And so at a price point of $13 at the moment, I would probably argue that if you plan on buying this company, then now is a decent time to buy in, given that it's one of the lowest prices it's been in the last year or so. It's bottomed around the seven to eight dollar mark. But on top of that, this company has been shorted by 38%. So in my mind, any company that is close to or above the 40% mark, this shows that Wall Street is unhappy with the company. They may have valid reasons to short the company, but this does increase the probability that the stock becomes a momentum based trade. Now, as a disclaimer, I haven't brought into the likes of Workhorse. By the time I released this video, I most likely would have invested in some of this company. But I just wanted to be super clear that as of yet, I haven't brought into Workhorse. And so next up, I do want to look into a company that I have already purchased in. It's ticker symbol TTCF, and that is Tattooed Chef. Now, I've dedicated a video on Tattooed Chef in the past, so check that out if you are interested. Taking a look at how the company is shorted, we have a number of shares outstanding of 17.5%. So actually, the short position has reduced in the last week. In addition, the buy-in price isn't the lowest, so we're at $22 at the moment. So if I'm honest, this isn't the greatest of example of a short position. However, the company is a lot more stable to the likes of Workhorse. But even when you have numbers in the 17% in terms of the short selling, there's always the possibility that this becomes a momentum stock, but slightly less likely given the reduced short interest. And so moving on to the next ticker symbol, we've got BBBY, that's Bed Bath and Beyond. I have one share in this company, I guess that counts, but we can see that we have a short sell position, currently just under the 31% mark. If we take a look at how the company has been performing though, we're at the $31 mark at the moment. If I'm honest, the stock does have room to grow, but of course you are buying these prices relatively at a high price still. Of course, when it comes to technical analysis, it doesn't actually make sense to have a price point of $31 per share for this company. Company, but that's not what we're focusing on this video. It's all about these momentum trades and whether or not Reddit can push these retail investors to buy up the stock and then trigger a short squeeze or even a gamma squeeze. Now the final ticker symbol I want to look at is BB and something to call out. As you've seen, I've been looking at the number of outstanding shares in terms of the short percentage. This is the figure I look into each time. So with BlackBerry, it's under the 10% mark. The probability of even a gamma squeeze is really minimal here. And so while there are talks of maybe BlackBerry can be the next potential, similar to how it was earlier in the year, well, it's looking less likely given that the short position is not really being covered. And so any changes in the underlying price of the stock is going to be related a little bit more towards the fundamentals. Sure, you'll have retail investors that are buying up the stock, but the price won't have much room to grow. So you may be wondering, why is it that the price started to increase from around May the 26th? Now, if you remember earlier in the year, we had the likes of GameStop that was heavily shorted. This caused the short squeeze to occur. And at the time, BlackBerry and other companies were heavily shorted as well. 
So once we start to see this increase yet again around the June period, similarly traded companies that were affected previously were also increasing as a result. So it wasn't only BlackBerry, the likes of Nokia as well started to increase in a similar-ish period, slightly earlier compared to the others, but Nokia also reported decent earnings during this period. But regardless, we do see these companies sort of oscillate in tandem when one of the other previously shorted companies start to have price movements. And so that is something to be aware of when you look into these momentum based trades. Are these companies shorted or not? So an easy way is clicking on the statistics each time for each company. I know it's a little bit tedious. And then scrolling down, checking out the number of outstanding shares. There's another way of performing this and it's by looking at a website such as highshortinterest.com. They have a ranked list with a ticker symbol and then the percentage in terms of the short interest. However, you have to be aware that it's not always updated. The last time was May 27. That's most likely because some of these companies generally provide the short interest at the end of the month. But even so, some of these numbers do change to the likes of Yahoo Finance. Now, given that Yahoo Finance is a more reliable source, it makes sense to use the most up-to-date metric. Now, hopefully you found this video interesting. The type of investments that I perform is a mixture these days, but mostly dividend-based investing. I will be providing more of these momentum-based stocks in the future. So if you are interested, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It'd be great if you share this video with your friends as well, if you think they'll find this interesting. New videos are posted each week, and with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.